Imagine a river flow being interrupted by a dam, causing the water to slow down or stop. This concept is similar to inductance in the world of electricity. Hello everyone, welcome to Exploring Science channel. Now let's dive into the nitty gritty of inductance. Picture this, you're in a canoe, paddling down a river, when suddenly you come across a dam. Your progress is halted, the current slowed, and you're stuck in a pool of swirling water. In a way, this is what inductance does to an electric current. It's akin to the dam in our river analogy, slowing down or stopping the flow of electricity. Inductance is a fundamental property of an electric circuit. It's the measure of an electrical component's ability to store energy in its magnetic field. And it opposes changes in the current flowing through it. When the current flowing through a circuit changes, the magnetic field changes as well. This change in magnetic field induces a voltage in the circuit that opposes the change in current. This is the essence of inductance. But how do we quantify inductance? Well, just as we measure distance in meters or weight in kilograms, we measure inductance in a unit called Henry, often abbreviated as H, named after the American scientist Joseph Henry, who discovered inductance independently. One, Henry is the amount of inductance required to induce one volt of electromotive force when the current is changing at the rate of one ampere per second. It's important to note that inductance doesn't always act to stop the current. When the current is steady, inductance has no effect. But when the current changes, as it does when you switch on or off a circuit, or when an AC current is flowing, inductance comes into play, resisting those changes, much like our dam resists the flow of the river. So, in essence, inductance is the dam of the electrical world, slowing down changes in current. Now, imagine a single river with its own dam. This is self-inductance. Just as the dam controls the flow of water in the river, self-inductance controls the flow of electrical current in a circuit specifically a coil of wire. When the current changes, the coil reacts, generating a voltage. It's as if the coil is saying, wait a minute, I was comfortable with the old current. Let's slow down this change. Picture our river again. If a large amount of water suddenly rushes toward the dam, the dam doesn't immediately let it all through. It gradually adjusts, allowing more water to pass over time. This is similar to how a coil of wire responds to a sudden increase in current. Now you might wonder, why does the coil do this? Well, it all comes down to a property known as magnetic field. When current flows through a coil, it creates a magnetic field around it. When the current changes, so does the magnetic field. And this changing magnetic field induces a voltage in the coil, which opposes the change in current. This is the essence of self-inductance. Self-inductance is the basic principle behind many devices we use every day. Consider transformers, for instance. They use self-inductance to step up or step down voltage, enabling safe transmission of electricity over long distances. And then there are inductors, components in circuits that store energy in their magnetic field and release it as needed. Without self-inductance, these devices wouldn't work. So, self-inductance isn't just a fascinating concept in physics. It's a fundamental principle that powers our world. It's the dam to the river of electricity, subtly controlling the flow, making sure everything runs smoothly and safely. So, self-inductance is all about how a single coil or circuit interacts with itself when the current changes. But what if we have two rivers close to each other, both with dams? This is mutual inductance. Just as the rhythm of the river impacts the operation of the dam, the flow of electricity through a coil of wire can influence another nearby coil. This principle is known as mutual inductance. Imagine you have two coils of wire placed close to each other. When an electric current passes through the first coil, it creates a magnetic field that expands and collapses. This changing magnetic field extends to the second coil inducing a voltage and thereby creating a current. Mutual inductance is a dance of energy, a ballet of electrons, if you will. It's like two rivers flowing side by side. If one river's current suddenly increases, it might cause the other river to swell as well, especially if their banks are closely connected. The same thing happens with coils of wire. 
a surge of electricity in one coil can stimulate a similar surge in a nearby coil. This principle of mutual inductance is the bedrock of many of our modern technologies. Take for instance transformers. They rely on mutual inductance to step up or step down voltage levels. The primary coil receives the initial voltage and creates a magnetic field. The secondary coil, placed in close proximity, picks up this magnetic field and converts it back into electrical energy at a different voltage. Another example is wireless chargers. When you place your phone on a wireless charging pad, mutual inductance is at play. The charging pad contains a coil that creates a magnetic field. The phone, in turn, has another coil that picks up this magnetic field and converts it back into electrical energy to charge the phone's battery. Mutual inductance is the invisible bond that connects two circuits or coils. It's the silent conversation happening between your phone and its wireless charger, or the secret handshake between the two coils in a transformer. In mutual inductance, it's all about how two circuits or coils influence each other when the current changes. Now that we understand the solar river and the neighboring rivers, let's compare them. Picture two scenarios. In the first, imagine you're in a canoe, paddling downstream. This is akin to self-inductance. The current you generate with your paddle causes ripples that affect your own motion, creating a feedback loop. In essence, self-inductance is a property of an electrical circuit that causes a change in the circuit's own current due to the magnetic field created by the same current. Now for the second scenario, Imagine two parallel rivers. If you create a surge in one river, it causes a surge in the other. This is mutual inductance. It's when a change in current in one circuit induces a voltage in a neighboring circuit, all thanks to the shared magnetic field. Both self-inductance and mutual inductance are fascinating phenomena that rely on the principle of electromagnetic induction. They both involve the induction of voltage due to a change in current. But where they differ is in the location of this induction. For self-inductance, the change happens within the same coil or circuit. It's an internal affair. It's like the ripples you create in your own canoe. But mutual inductance involves two separate coils or circuits. It's an external interaction, like the influence one river has on another. In practical applications, self-inductance is more commonly found in devices like inductors and transformers, where the aim is to control the current within a single circuit. Mutual inductance, on the other hand, is key in applications where energy transfer between circuits is crucial, like in wireless charging systems, for example. So, while they share similar principles, self-inductance and mutual inductance each have their unique characteristics and uses. Understanding these differences helps us harness the power of electricity more effectively. Whether it's one river or two, the principles of inductance help to control and harness the power of electricity. If you enjoyed this journey down the river of inductance, there's a whole ocean of scientific concepts waiting for you. Welcome to the Exploring Science YouTube channel, your virtual passport to the cosmos of knowledge. From the minute atoms that make up everything around us, to the vast expanse of the universe, from the intricate workings of our own bodies, to the complex ecosystems of our planet, we delve into it all. Exploring science is a sanctuary for those whose curiosity knows no bounds. We make the seemingly incomprehensible world of science not just understandable, but downright fascinating. Whether you're a physics fanatic, a biology buff, or a chemistry connoisseur, you'll find something here to pique your interest. Our channel is a treasure trove of knowledge where we break down complex scientific concepts into bite-sized, digestible pieces. We unravel the mysteries of the universe one video at a time. Our aim? To illuminate the beauty of science and foster an appreciation for the natural world. But we're not just about imparting knowledge. At Exploring Science, we believe that learning should be fun. That's why we present our content in an engaging, conversational tone. We want you to feel like you're having a chat with a friend rather than sitting in a lecture hall. And the best part, you don't need a PhD to understand our videos. 
we make science accessible to everyone, regardless of their background or educational level. So, whether you're a student looking for some extra help, a teacher seeking new ways to inspire your students, or a lifelong learner with an insatiable thirst for knowledge, you're in the right place. You'll find a vast array of topics on our channel, from the fundamental principles of physics, to the latest discoveries in biology, to the exciting world of chemistry. And we're constantly adding new content, so there's always something fresh to learn. Join us on the Exploring Science YouTube channel, where we make the complex world of science simple and enjoyable. Until then, keep exploring, keep learning. Check my latest video appearing on the screen. I will meet you in next video. Thanks for watching.